Well, maybe you and I can have a conversation then if you'd like. Okay. <laughs> and see if anybody else jumps on here. I've actually started recording it. That way, if people want to use it later, they can. Uh, I had okay. somebody actually ask that. Um, will this be available later? I can't do it tonight, but I might like to some other time. Yeah. So. All right. Well, um, the first of our workshops here or webinars, whatever you want to call it, is Radical Hospitality. And Bobby, are you familiar with Robert Schnazy's, Bishop Schnazy's work on the five practices of yeah. fruitful congregations and all of that? So yeah. um, kind of de develop these workshops based on that concept, but thinking in terms of neighborhood missionaries. So mm -hmm. uh, the sermons are, we're titling the series Five Practices of Neighborhood Missionaries. Um, so we even did it just now. I asked, how are you? I, I have an article here in front of me. I'm not going to read it. But the gist of it is we often have small talk just like we just did. Hi, how are you? Well, good. How are you? Uh, pretty good. Thanks. And then we really come to find out we don't necessarily often listen to how is your day really or how are things really going? And to the rest of the... Yeah. The rest of the world, uh, a lot of people would say that's kind of strange that in America, especially, we do that. We just treat it as small talk when we have no inclination that we actually want to know how somebody's doing. Um, so, well, I'm actually doing good on that. <laughs> I, I'm actually doing good. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I, I think about that sometimes. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, I guess if, if somebody asks me and I want to, have a conversation about how things have been going. I usually tell them a few things, right? And if I don't, if I don't really want to talk, and say you know, fine. Mm -hmm. It's almost accepted. And and if somebody responds at all, you've got an open door. Right, right. That's very true. I mean, I found myself asking different questions just just to see if it'll shake it up a little bit. So what's been going on yeah. or what's new or, you know, mm -hmm. no, like in this last week when we had some funerals, you know, asking people instead of mm -hmm. how are you, um, you hanging in there, you, you know, some other yeah. way to get a response beyond small talk. I'd rather not really talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, or, or how are you dealing with it? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, Anything other than a, a one-word answer? Because if you have a one-word answer, yes or no, or okay, or whatever, then there's no conversation. I'm laughing because I wanted to say right, and that was a one-word <laughs> answer, you know, or exactly. <laughs> uh, it wasn't a question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that's why part of this, when we're talking about hospitality, has everything to do with asking good questions. And, and that, that's the key. Yeah. And you know as much about this as I do, or, or more so, um, to not ask close-ended questions. Mm -hmm. That can be answered yes or no, but open-ended questions. Um, so I'm going to share my screen here. If I can figure out or remember how. Do you see a PowerPoint presentation there? Uh, yes. Okay. Starting my slideshow. Okay. So this is our first workshop on how to become neighborhood missionaries. My, my thoughts were, Bobby, if we were meeting in person, that's what we would be doing at the well is yeah. doing these workshops, but now that we're in a place of suspending worship, these become online webinars yeah. or workshops. Um, I think about this, this verse a lot when I think about hospitality, and I mentioned that this morning too, uh, mm -hmm. or these verses in Thess First Thessalonians, especially verse 8. So being affectionately desirous of you, or another version says, so we loved you so much, that we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, 
because you have become very dear to us. Mm -hmm. So what does this teach us about hospitality or what does the Bible in general teach us about hospitality? It's really about being open and sharing yourself mm -hmm. uh, and being interested in somebody, but it's about developing a relationship. Right. Relationship being the key there. Uh huh. And in the ancient Near East, as I understand it, it was hospitality was very serious business. Yeah. Um, right down to the fattened calf was was often, as I mentioned, with the prodigal son, that was meant to be for guests. That was meant to be for special occasions. Mm -hmm. um, unless you were very rich, you typically didn't have meat for every meal. Mm -hmm. That that was for uh, hosp hospitality. Well, and the whole idea this morning that you talked about Sodom and Gomorrah, that was about hospitality. We've, uh, we've overemphasized it in, in uh, looking at sexual kinds of things, but it was really about the hospitality and how important it was in their day. Mm -hmm. More important than almost anything. Right. To be like, well, I offer you my daughters instead. Please don't do this wicked thing. Yeah. Yeah. Have my have my daughters. That seems so strange to us nowadays. But that does help yeah. get to what's 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 happening there in that story. Um, yeah, because we it was a story about not providing hospitality and yeah, and they were destroyed. <laughs> right, because later in in the I forget wh which of the prophets talks about that. Um, what was the sin of Sodom and? And Gomorrah, they actually say it has to do with um, other things. But um, mm -hmm. yeah. Let's see here. So how would you define hospitality? What are your thoughts on hospitality? Well, well one thing I would uh, always say that it was about openness and acceptance. Mm -hmm. And it looks like, uh, as we refer to it, it's about intentionality. Right. That you don't do it by accident. Uh, and uh, I don't know how you exactly put it, but there, there is an interest in other people. Right. Taking interest not, in other people. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's it's not just in trying to have good manners or being nice, because mm -hmm. that only goes so far. Yeah, yeah. And so it, it's you you want people to feel like you really wanted to know them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and you know some people uh, that when you're around them, you just feel like you're the most important person in the world. Yes. Yeah, I have one pastor friend, and, and you do this too, but there are, are I, now that I think of it, several that are really good at that, um, that you're the yeah. most important person in the world at that moment. Now you know that, that that's how they treat everybody, which makes it even more credible when they treat uh -huh. you that way. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah. And sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. And, and I, I think probably... I do that too much according to the way I feel about it mm -hmm. rather than that just being a, you know, a hundred percent principle. Right. Right. I think it's that intentionality. Once again, that keep coming back to that intentionally making space for people. Yeah. Um, has a lot to do with hospitality. And I like what you said. It's, it's beyond just being kind to somebody. Um, because that there's a word for that. That's kindness. Whereas hospitality mm -hmm. seems to imply something more that relationship, as you mentioned. And, and maybe a lot of people aren't because they don't care. Mm -hmm. I mean, you like churches, you know, if you're trying to teach them to be hospitable, but they, they aren't real good at it. It may be because they really don't want to be that way. I mean, there, we, we know that there are certain people with gifts like that. Right. And there, there's probably uh, many that don't have the gifts, but they don't have the desire either. Because I think some of it you can learn. Yes. Yeah. 
And that's exactly what this is about. I wouldn't cl claim to have the art of hospitality, but uh, those who have that gift can really help others pick up on some pointers. Um, one thing I've, as a former youth minister, I, I can think about one of the students in one of my groups that uh, he loved NASCAR. I mean, he loves sports in general, but he could talk NASCAR all day long. Now, I, I have to confess, Bobby, I don't care at all about NASCAR. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. understand just driving in a circle over and over again, <laughs> mm -hmm. but some people really love that, but gosh, I loved listening to him talk about it. And, <laughs> and, and that was something different for me is, is understanding. I don't have to be interested in NASCAR or whatever the subject may be, but I might be interested in their interest. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, there's several different, um, and I don't think I included them here. No, I didn't. Uh, definitions, but um, biblically, uh, hospitality is the generous or gracious treatment of guests. Uh, Merriam-Webster defines it as the activity or business. I thought this was interesting. The activity or business of providing services. In other words, like guests in mm -hmm. hotels and restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that's part of their business is hospitality. Mm -hmm. um, then radical hospitality. Oh yeah, go ahead. But, but there, if you've got somebody that's gifted at it, they still have to learn the strategies of what you're wanting to accomplish. Right. Because exactly. they can be real gifted at it, but they still can miss the purpose. Right. Of what you, of, of a hotel or a church or whatever it is. Because you have to have a strategy of how you use that. Uh huh. And you're reminding me, I think that's very, very good that there's both that strategy piece, but also that heart piece. In other yeah. words, we, we could have strategies and, and skills all day long, but if we don't also feel that within our heart, I think it's, it's kind of pointless too. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, this quote I thought was interesting. Radical hospitality requires more intentional invitation and welcome. It goes beyond greeters at the door and handshakes during worship to welcoming every person as an honored guest. Right. I like that. And that's where the whole idea is. They really wanted me to be there. Yes. You know, there was some, something for me, you know. And the, the and hopes of... Yeah, go ahead. No, that, that just, uh, you know, to support what you just said, that... That's why uh, men as greeters <laughs> doesn't work as well. Yeah, they're 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 good at giving the, the handshake, and the, you know, pat on the back, and that kind of stuff. Uh, but as far as showing the interest, there are a few men who can do it, but a lot are just trying to get all the boxes checked. Exactly. This is part of my to-do list, and part of my to-do list today is I'm the greeter at the door. Yep. So I did the greeting part. You're greeted. Now, here's your bulletin or whatever, and, and have a seat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Too bad we don't have some women on here that, that might be able to give us more uh, pointers there. Well, maybe they'll watch and respond to you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've kind of been thinking about this in these these uh, workshops too is that one day we hope to be able to do these types of things again we hope to es essentially uh start new home groups or have you know as i mentioned this morning move the grill around to the front yard and uh, be able to have mm -hmm. different events where we intentionally do this next piece which is what would it look like to have meaningful and lasting relationships with new people. Mm. And so the idea here is that we need meaningful and lasting relationships. We're, we're a, a relational people. I think I had this scripture this morning too, which I think is really interesting. Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Mm -hmm. I've always enjoyed that thought in in um hebrews but it's kind of like that might be jesus and he didn't realize it 
were you hospitable? Were you loving towards that person? So, um, what would we like it to look at? I think, what would we like it to look like? I, I think you can see some of those questions there and we don't need to answer all of those per se, but how do we move past say the small talk? Well, you have to want to. To have that desire, <laughs> to want to. And then you have to have the knowledge of uh, what that means, like knowing about uh, questions that go beyond the surface. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, uh, and then respecting somebody's boundaries too. I mean, you know, you, you, can, you can do that without uh, disrespecting boundaries if somebody gives you any clue. I mean, you know, the, you, you ask how's the family, how's something, and they tell you and it's not good, then you uh, uh, lead them on to tell you more. Right. So you ask, you know, probing questions or deeper questions, but I also appreciate you saying uh, that we respect the boundaries too. That's good. And well, that's Bob, what scares people. Yeah. I mean, it scares people that you want to know too much. <laughs> right. Right. So, yeah, I, I keep coming back to this idea of the art of hospitality. There is a certain art to it, like right. knowing knowing the finesse, knowing when you're maybe going too far. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Um, because uh, now we'll move into kind of the skill development area. And um, I can't help but think of, as I'm trying to be healthier, uh, somebody turned me on to a program that talks about our behaviors and how we change that, especially with say wanting to lose weight or wanting to get in better shape is we have to develop skills because willpower only takes us so far, you know? Willpower mm -hmm. tends to be a limited resource, but we continue to learn as long as we live. We continue, you know, willpower will be spent at some point and then we have to start over. But as we mm -hmm. continue to develop skills, like for, you know, trying to lose weight is uh, the skill of slowing down and enjoying food. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. that will help you to not consume mass quantities, <laughs> um, yeah. little things like that. So when I think of this skill of um, how to be more hospitable, it has everything to do with something you're already a pro at, Bobby, which is asking good questions. And the way I've even talked to you about this before, the way you just approach anything and everything people are talking to you about with like a sense of curiosity. Huh, tell me more about that. Um, but I've done this before with groups, uh, and, and it'll be kind of maybe awkward here, but nonetheless, for people who are watching it back is if you picture, first of all, as we considered this skill development, picture in your mind's eye, a stack of objects. And those objects include a nameplate, you know, perhaps on the top of a desk or something, there's a nameplate. And then on top of that nameplate is a house. And on top of that house is a group of people. They're standing on the roof for whatever reason. And that group of people is work, they're all reaching up at each of them into a work glove. And that work glove is tossing an airplane. Now this airplane has a strange propeller. It has a propeller that's made out of a tennis racket. And on the handle end, it has a light bulb. So again, those objects are, I don't know if you can say them with me, if, if you've got them already, Bobby, or not. On top of the desk, there is a nameplate, name plate, and then on top of the nameplate, there is a house. A house. On top of the roof of the house, people, there's a, I almost said people. a group of people, and they're reaching up into a glove. The work glove, and that work glove is tossing a, an airplane. An airplane uh, with a strange propeller. A tennis, uh, propeller uh-huh tennis racket and then there's a light bulb on the other end yeah all right well that was our workshop for tonight uh, <laughs> just kidding but um you can probably see what we're getting at here immediately you almost have this stack of objects memorized and you probably know this as a mnemonic device 
And in our the way our minds work, it's easier for us to memorize strange objects or, mm -hmm. you know, they call it the mind palace. If you can associate different things in your mind, you're, you're more likely to remember them. So if mm -hmm. you think about it, if we're having conversations with people, what is that first object, which was a what? The name. Name. What does that remind us to talk to a person about? or ask them their name. What's your name? Yeah, that's a great place to start to get to know somebody new, right? What's your name? Um, and this is where the boundaries things com comes up, Bobby. The next part is the house. What do you think that reminds us to ask people? Family. Yeah, maybe family. Um, specifically, where do you where live? Where are they from? Yeah. yeah, where are you from? Where are you from is probably better than where do you live? That sounds kind of creepy. I've, uh, over the years when I've done this, people have noted that. So you're from yeah. the area, those types of questions. And then on top of the house is the group of people. And that's where you can yeah. talk. Tell me about your family. Who do you, who do you live with? Or do you have a roommate or, or whatever? Mm -hmm. And then you keep going through those objects. And the next one was the, their, the people work. reaching up into the. Yeah, the glove, work glove. The work glove. So what do you think that is about? Where do you work? Where do you work? What do you do? What do you do? How, um, maybe it's a student where do you go to school how do you spend your time because we know that some people maybe don't do any of that maybe they don't have a job or they're not in school how do you spend your time mm -hmm. um let's see and then the airplane, airplane has something to do with travel and so now we're getting to towards people's interests or where they've been so where have you been before where would you like to travel um, then we have that tennis racket propeller thing. Sports, what do you, Sports, what do, you right. do in all Sports, time? hobbies, interests. Exactly. And then you get to, as you're d going deeper in a conversation, on the other end of that tennis racket, the handle, and you had a light bulb. What do, you, what do light bulbs often remind us of? I've got a light bulb moment. Kind what, of our, what did you say? Oh, did I lose you there for a minute? The light bulb kind of is like the light bulb moment. So that has to do with ideas. Oh, I had an idea. Okay. okay. Where we, we're starting to move into deeper conversations with people. But um, part of what this does, Bobby, and, and again, you, since you, you know, counsel or work with a lot of people, you know about asking questions, is mm -hmm. it helps the, um, the introverts know or have a plan as to where to go okay, I'm nervous about meeting somebody new, but I have a plan, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And then it also helps the extroverts to realize, okay, I need to be quiet. <laughs> and I need yeah. to have a plan for asking good questions so that I can step back and listen to the person that I'm talking to instead of thinking about what I want to say next, right? Yeah, and you, you uh, actually have to remember some of it because if... if uh... If you're asking them those questions and then you forget where they're from or, or something, their name or that kind of stuff, yeah. then you're really showing uh, insincerity. Right, right. It may just be a bad memory, but you know, it's... And when I learned this stuff, yeah, they, they even suggested, okay, get some three by five cards and, and jot some notes down so you can remember some of the yeah. things. Because yeah. this might be, as you know, especially in some of the uh, counseling and things you do, this is a multi-part conversation. You mm -hmm. might be, begin and only get so far, and then the following week, hey, I remember you telling me something about working at, you know, such and such a place. How's that going this week? How, how's, how's work going? And you, you kind of pick up where you left off. Yeah, and if they're not interested in that, you can ask them. Where's the most interesting place you've ever worked? Right. I right. mean, they may hate what they do. <laughs> exactly. Do you like your job? I mean, you're already getting into the next part of this, is, which is to ask more questions. So it's so far beyond, hey, Bobby, where do you work? Where do you live? Do you have family? Mm -hmm. And just kind of, again, like men, we want to check off the boxes, right? <laughs> So we have to expand and think about, okay, the, the who, what, when, where, why, and how questions. I mean, if we're mm -hmm. starting with, um, well, hi, I'm, I'm Andrew. What's your name? 
and you tell me your, your name's Bobby. I said, oh, okay, is that, is Bobby your given name? No. <laughs> no, is it actually Robert? Nope. I guess, yeah. Yeah, after granddad. You're named after your granddad, that's interesting. So why did your parents choose to name you after your grandpa? Well, that one and the other one. So that's <laughs> where my whole name came from. What What is your, let's see, do I know your middle name? Yeah, I doubt it. It's, <laughs> I'm trying uh, to Robert, think if I did. Robert Chipman. Robert Chipman? Yeah. So you're named after two grandfathers? Yeah, and then uh, uh, my dad was a Chipman, his dad was a Chipman, and his dad was a Chipman, and my son's a Chipman. So these ha names have been in the family for generations, huh? Yeah, it's not that we're juniors. It's just that uh, that's a shared name that's just, been passed down. Right. Yeah, Kelly's dad, I think, is a James, and then her, her brother has James, Bradley James. I'm a James, too, middle name. Hmm. See, my, my entire point there is we just had a, what, couple-minute conversation there and learned something new about each other, our middle names. Mm-hmm. Um, you can spend who, who knows how long just talking about the first question on that stack of, of objects. So, right. Good stuff. That's a, that is a good way to remember uh, in case you get stuck because yeah. sometimes you get stuck and, and then you, you don't want to feel like you're just quizzing somebody. Right. And it, you know, just like with any skill, it may seem awkward at first. Um, for others, this isn't awkward at all. This is maybe somewhat even think this isn't necessary. Well, I know how, how to have a conversation. Uh, yeah, but is it more of an extroverted con conversation or introvert, you know? Are you mm -hmm. wanting to talk about yourself more often than not versus try and listen and hear about the other person? And the but, thing is, at the church, if nobody's interested in somebody that comes, that's what they remember. Mm -hmm. that nobody really cared that I was there. Right. I can't remember where I heard this, but it, 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 I think it applies here is um, all too often, even at church or maybe even especially at church, especially during this time when folks are talking about, gosh, I just want to get back to church and, and, and be with my people. Um, but when we are in church, often what people do is they, in, or any anywhere, I don't <laughs> want to just blame church folks, but if you're in a conference, if, you know, an annual conference, for example, as, you know, United Methodist pastors here, or United Methodist clergy, we often quickly look around for our friends versus mm -hmm. instead of looking for our friends, what if we looked for where is Jesus in that room? Where is love in that room? And to head that direction, because we'll, we'll get to spend time with our friends or the ones that we really want to spend time with. That's fine. But how do you develop new relationships, new friendships, if you're always just sticking with those that you know? So where is mm -hmm. love in that room? Where do I need to be in that room tonight or, you know, this morning mm -hmm. versus, oh, there's my buddy. Let me go talk to him. Yeah. I don't know if that's that's helpful or not, but something I've been thinking about. Yeah, and it seems like... Uh... All of this applies to later. I mean, that's that's the way people are feeling right now. Right, right. Very much so. So it's kind of a strange time to be doing this this series on how to be neighborhood missionaries, and yet it makes perfect sense, I think, in some ways. Yeah. If, if this... you're building a foundation, uh, then you'll know the foundation by the time that, that you really put it in practice. Exactly. And then looking for ways that we can build relationships with our neighbors. I think I shared that this morning. I wave or say hi to my neighbor across the street all the time. And yet I don't know his name, you know, and so yeah. at some point I probably need to go, Hey, my name's Andrew, by the way, <laughs> what's your name? So even if it's shouting across the street to each other, so we can remain socially distanced, mm -hmm. there's, there's a way we can build that relationship. And one of these yeah. days, I can throw burgers on the grill and invite them over, you know? <laughs> exactly. 
when we're There'll able more to do that to again. Come. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I attached a, a handout as part of this, so you're welcome to that. I don't know if I um, I didn't necessarily have people say you need to bring the handout there, but it, it allows folks to later, if they want to, to fill in those those uh, objects I just mentioned and um, oh, okay. what they mean. Um, but there's some fill in the blanks too, and I think I've touched on this, but I, I probably need to make sure that I do, which is um, that meaningful and lasting relationships are formed when we reveal ourselves to others and they reveal themselves to us. So it's a, both a, a, a mutual exchange that we're sharing about ourselves, but ultimately we want to start with getting them to share about themselves. Um, I don't, you've, you've probably found this out over the years, Bobby, that um, oftentimes people might say things like, oh, wow, Bobby is such a, he helped me out so very much. And I, I, I have, I, I'm, I'm willing to bet that uh, nine times out of 10, you were just a good listener. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's usually the way they interpret that. Yeah. He told me, he taught me so much. And then you're kind of like, uh, I just really asked you good questions. I mean, so. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, a lot of this stuff, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir here, so to speak, that we strive to Think about our verbal and nonverbal cues. Um, even here, mm -hmm. we're trying to say, uh-huh, I understand, um, or we're nodding our heads. Um, we've talked about, I think, conversation expanders, the who, what, when, where, why, and how. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about your name. Where did it come from? What does it mean? There are a few other objects, too, by the way, Bobby, um, which goes even deeper into some more questions. This is kind of the advanced level, I guess you would say, of that skill, which is standing on top of that light bulb on top of the tennis racket is a, a PFC soldier, a private first class soldier. And he is holding a goalpost, a football goalpost. So that is where we move into a PFC is a, another, you know, it's an acronym, another mnemonic device for problems, frustrations, and concerns. And we can obviously get there over the last couple of weeks, not to go too deep into politics, but gosh, aren't you frustrated with what's been going on um, lately with the division in our country? And uh, we can quickly find common ground, even with people on, on different sides of the aisle, so to speak. Yeah, I'm fed up with all of it. <laughs> yeah. so, and then the other one was the, the goalposts, which invites people to tell me about your, your goals and your dreams. What, what would you, what, what's God's dream for your life? I think Blake, our, our, our current DS here in the central district puts it that way. What, what's God's dream for you? I think I've heard him say something like that before. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Well, Bobby, how was this, as we kind of wrap things up here a little bit, how was this helpful to you or was it helpful to you? Yeah, I, it was, uh, for me, a lot of it was refresher, uh, but reminding me of some things that I knew that I probably wouldn't ordinarily just think about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I can't recall. Be, we Sorry, we, we talked about it before in, in group, but I, I hadn't thought of it since then. Had I done that stack of objects before at the well? I can't remember. Yeah. I feel like I have. I can't remember. Yes, you had. And, and that's where I got them. And, and, uh, uh, and I remembered them after you started talking about them. But now I remember them better for having yeah. uh, been reminded. Right. It's interesting how they come, come back to you. Yeah. And, and and just knowing that somewhere in our memory banks, we, we, we do remember this stuff if we can just access it. Yeah. One thing I'll take away that you kind of mentioned tonight that helped me realize, yes, we need to develop these skills or it's helpful to develop these skills, but also to have the heart behind it, that we want to yeah. be genuine about it. So I, I think that's something I'll take away from tonight.
I love how that works. I, you know, I put together this workshop and have done various forms of it over the years, but each time I learn something new as well. Well, and one of the difficulties today is there is so much ingenuineness in people yeah. uh, that nobody seems to really be who they say they are. And it's, you know, you can't hardly trust anybody's word. Yeah, that's and, such a challenge. And, and so that's one of the challenges to us is to live what we believe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think there's a word for that, and it's in, integrity, how, how to live a life of integrity. Yeah, because I've been, you know, I've been thinking about the Senate in the House of how does what they offer compare to what Christ wants for people. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and then, you know, then we just become selfish, fighting yeah. for a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I appreciate, again, not to necessarily go into that topic too much, but our bishop's words lately, I've, I've really appreciated. Um, in, in thinking that we have a political problem, it's really that we have a spiritual problem. Mm -hmm. And that's that. You know, the confession in our liturgy as United Methodists that we have not loved God with our whole heart and we have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. And so mm -hmm. that's really our problem in a lot of ways and not, not necessarily a political problem. Almost makes that prayer become a lot more uh, real than mm -hmm. it ever was. Very much so. So... Um, what would be something that you want to, would want to take away from this week or what's, what's a challenge that you would suggest for yourself? Like I just mentioned, mine is probably to actually introduce myself to my neighbor across the street instead of just yelling at him and saying mm -hmm. hi. So is there any th practical step you'd like to take this week based on what we've talked about tonight? Well, uh, I'm not real sure since I'm not getting out much. Uh, yeah. And, you know, ordinarily I would say, well, I'd like to go somewhere and meet a stranger and just get in a conversation. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm not motivated to do that much right now. Yeah, that's the challenge of typically you are that kind of person yeah. that wants to be with people. And so right now it, it is such a challenge. But I think but I, I can I can when it becomes uh, an option again. Yeah. That's why I appreciated what you said too about, okay, right now is maybe this is the time we can build a foundation. We can build some of those mm -hmm. skills up more. So mm -hmm. good stuff. Well, kind of maybe Bobby has a closing prayer here. I'm just going to share these words from first Peter four, eight through 11. So it's almost more okay. of a benediction and then a prayer. Um, Peter writes or whoever the author of Peter, first Peter was as we think it was Simon Peter but he said above all keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins show hospitality to one another without grumbling as each has received a gift use it to serve one another as, God, as good stewards of God's grace whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen.